Hey everybody, so today I have this hard drive here. This is a Seagate Barracuda 4 terabyte. It's a big hard drive. Um, it's actually not powering on and it's actually in here for data recovery. So we're going to show you something actually kind of interesting today. So whenever you have one of these, right, we want to plug it in because what? It's a SATA connection here. SATA connection is usually one of the more basic protocols you ever see for any type of hard drive. Um, and that's a real basic one in there. So you can obviously get a sled like this one too. We have like a USB uh, sled that we can plug it in here. And I want to show you something interesting when you do that. So when I have it plugged in here, I need to plug it into a USB, correct? So let's actually do that. Let's power it on. And this actually does have a light that's going to come on here. So watch, when I let's plug it into USB. Okay, so I have it plugged in, and I turn it on, nothing. But when I just do this, if I slide it up, see the light came on. This drive itself is actually shorting out um, the whole entire USB interface there. And I don't want to damage my computer or blue screen my computer any further because there's a problem with this drive. So I have this PCB here. It's on the back here. That's where our BIOS chip is. And we want to go ahead and take it off. And I have a replacement one here, actually. It's exactly the same. So if you even look at the back here, I know the back doesn't matter as much, but it's actually the same here. It's going to fit. And I'm sorry, it is like there's like a monsoon or something going on outside right now. So excuse the, the rain and the lightning and stuff like that. But we're going to go ahead and remove this. PCB and we're going to go ahead and replace this and then see what happens right so I swapped over to the donor you see that there's a light there right and um, now what do you think should happen right when we plug it back in it shouldn't short right so let's go ahead because we have another board so you saw it, it flickered for like a second there that means it's trying to read it um, now the power issues fixed but what else we still can't see any data there's no blink other blinking lights to show that the data is being detected there and uh, we need to do something. We actually missed a step. Does anyone know what that step is? Well, what it is is these have a BIOS chip here. And you can see the BIOS chip is the one right there. You see this one with the four pins, the big one with the looks like a little spider there. That one we actually need to swap over to the new board because that is the brains or of the operation. And we need to swap that over, otherwise we can't see the data. So let's go ahead and just do that right now. We just need to desolder it, and then we need to solder back to another one. And so hopefully from there, there's no other problems and we can get the data, right? Just make it a little bit easier to get it off. There's your little spider. There's your BIOS chip. So the dots are most important. So that was going on the top right corner. So we need to replace it the same way we did last time. Otherwise, it's not going to work because that's really important. And that's why it's there in the first place. So we're going to go ahead and put this back on. We're going to put some flux on. And we're going to go ahead and put this back on. good so they clean it up now. Looks good. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit. Then I'm gonna put it back, and we'll see if it works. So I have it here now. I want to plug it in, and um, I mean we swapped the BIOS chip, right? We swapped the PCB and the BIOS chip from the original to the donor one. And let's go ahead and see if it's gonna work. Usually, uh, I don't know. At least th this part should fix it, but then there can be other things as well. So let's go ahead, plug it in. Let's see what we get. So it comes on. It's starting to load up. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's very faint. 
Let's see if it starts blinking then. That will at least be good enough to at least see something. Let's see. Anything yet? Uh, so, oh, we have a partition here. Okay, so we see that this is an unallocated drive when we see that it's about four terabytes. So it looks like there's still a little bit of work actually going on that's going to be involved here. Okay, so we're still having trouble even reading the data from the drive just by plugging it into Windows. Windows is actually having trouble reading the data. So we need to also use a recovery tool, at least the one of the ones we use here. It's not going to be the PC3000 because this actually doesn't need the PC3000. Um, that would be more for advanced uh, type of recoveries if we couldn't see it even through our software. We have another level, we have another step of recovery, and we're going to use our recovery software to help at least read it because we see that there's a four terabyte drive being detected, but we can't read the data. So let's go over to our software here. We have in our uh, recovery software, we see that in our Sabren drive here, there is a four terabyte drive, and we see that there is a basic data partition here, which is good because we did run a scan. It did take a very, very long time um, for that scan. Um, to to, to finish and we see that there's a basic data partition we see it's a four terabyte so um, unfortunately because we can't see it really in file explorer we have to go through this uh, type of software really to do it and it'll help uh, retrieve it as well so we're going to click here and um, we see actually all the data that's actually here there's lots of stuff um, this is the the content i don't really want to show obviously it's the customer's uh, personal information there but at least it's here and we're able to see it so if we go ahead and select a few files and see how big the storage is going to be. This is a four terabyte drive, so it should be pretty big. I want to select all of it because a lot of the stuff is junk. It's like root uh, stuff and it's like app information, and that can give a problem when you're ever transferring or moving over stuff. So we see we have it marked at about 1.66 terabytes. So that's a lot, a lot of storage there. So we want to usually match up a drive uh, that's been uh, matched up here because even if it's showing 1.66, there can still be extra as well. We wouldn't want to uh, to clutter up. Uh, one of the drives so um so we always want to match up the drive so we'll get like a four terabyte drive we'll transfer all the data and that should be it anyways guys i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on data recovery on the steps that we do take um for these type of data recoveries we do have all the tools here especially if we needed to run more of an advanced data recovery we can also do head replacements if that did require it and if this would need also pc3000 to help read the data we would also have that um for it but at least it's very fortunate that we didn't need to go that far with it we did see that there is quite a bit of work that goes involved with this we still have an issue even after we did all the hard work really just to get a donor board to, to resolder the BIOS chip, and there still is a problem reading the data. So, anyways, guys, I hope you guys just enjoy watching. Um, we do lots of data recoveries, do lots of liquid spill repairs, do lots of advanced level stuff for you guys. And if you guys are interested, definitely go ahead and check our other videos based on that. Um, but otherwise, thanks a lot for watching. Take care. Bye.